Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. It's got to be Duke. It has to be Duke. I mean, you that this past week was miserable for them. And the things that we thought were problematic, I'm not saying that you think differently of them now. But the fact is this team struggles from the perimeter. I mean, they, they, they did not shoot the basketball well in either game. But against Georgia Tech, really just just bad. Five for 17 from three. Uh, just not good enough. They don't have enough threats. And, and then the rim protection is an issue. Um, you know, they, 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 they really struggled against Georgia Tech to defend the lane. And this is concerning for Duke. This was a team that entered as preseason number two. Preseason number two. And the road losses for John Preseason number one in the field of 68. Yeah, preseason number one in the field (laughs) of 68. So, guys, if we're going to be very critical of a North Carolina last year, we need to be critical of John Shire right now. He's four and eight in true road games. Four of 16 from three on on Saturday. And, you know, what stood out to me is they just let Bay and Dongo, who's a good player, but they let him have his way. They let a six-foot-nine freshman go nine for 11 from the floor and really dominate and control the game with 21 points. Um, it, it's it's just not good enough. And and for this Duke team, Kyle Filipowski is, is putting up numbers. He's having a good start to the year. That's not surprising. You know, does Tyrese Proctor go down a minute in the game? Yes, he does. But in this game, I just felt like on the offensive end of the floor, when Georgia Tech got Duke set up in the half court, I was asking the question, how is Duke going to be able to keep Georgia Tech's defense honest? And I like Caleb Foster. He came off the bench again. He had a good game. He's playing well for, for Duke. Shire's got to find a five that works for him. And right now, they, that's, they're that's my question with, not, not to trying to figure it out. I don't know yeah. who that lineup is. That that's my question with this Duke team, right? Like we're all I know we're concerned about the point guard play, right? Um Tyrese Proctor has not taken the leap that I expected him to take this year. Um, I think other people expected that as well. Um, Jared McCain has not come in and had the impact that a Reed Shepard or a Robert Dillingham has. Um, Caleb Foster has had a couple big games. He's had a bunch of quiet games too. Jeremy Roach is a good player, but he is, you want him has like this, the complimentary piece in the backcourt. We get all that. That's all been there. But I think that there's enough pieces there they can figure it out. My big question to you, what do you do next to Kyle Filipowski? Because yep. Mark Mitchell's not like the anchor defensively. He's more of like a four. That means you have to play Kyle Filipowski at the five. You kind of lose some of that rim protection. You put Ryan Young out there. He's he's good in a role. He's a good backup big man in the ACC. But like he's also you can't take charges, and you can't take charges this year. Yeah. So what do you what, what do you do at the five spot? And then the second part of it, To is if you have questions at the the point and you have questions at the five. You got a lot of questions because I think those are the two anchors that you really need in college basketball right now. What are the questions at the point? Just out of curiosity, what, I like just, what's what's I the specific think, question? I don't think that any of them have been good enough yet what? to be to be like a title contending team, right? Like Proctor's been fine. Jared McCain has been a freshman, but if you want those guys, if you want, if we're talking like Duke number one team in the country, we thought Tyrese Proctor was going to be an All American. They have the eighth best uh, turnover rate offensively in the country. They assist each other on fifty-four percent of the baskets. I, it, I I think all of it comes down to who's going to rim protect because Filipowski is struggling to do that. So that transitions what you do, everything defensively, because Duke, whenever they're guarding, they love to get out and pressure and pressure the passing lanes and push you out towards half court. The problem with that is if they get past that first line, there's nobody back there. Last year, there was somebody back there. Two years ago, there was Mark Williams back there. There is there there is no Derek Lively or Mark Williams. Like, now it's Kyle Filipowski, who's much more Matthew Hurt than he is than he is uh, Derek Lively. Correct? Like, that's the issue with them right now. They're going to have to outscore some more teams. That offense is going to have to be much better. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, Use the bonus code FIELD200 and you will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly when placing your first wager of at least $10 with BetMGM. Here's what you got to do. Download the BetMGM app. Sign up using the bonus code FIELD200. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any 
game, regardless of sport. You will receive $200 in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. Just make sure that you use the bonus code FIELD200 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available under one wallet in select states. As a New Jersey resident, this is super convenient for me when I have to go cover games in New York or Philly. When crossing state borders, just log into your existing account instead of having to create new accounts in each state that you go to. And most importantly, I got to let you know, we do have some fun stuff coming up for this college basketball season. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops odds boosts, my personal favorite, Parlay odds boosts. So download the Bet MGM app today. Sorry, what what, what did I say wrong? No, I just <laughs> he's much more Matthew Hurt. I was like, whew, ouch. <laughs> yeah, they're just they're, they're not. They're, you're right. Like they haven't been the players that you expected to raise their game to another level. Like maybe Proctor just is what he is, and that's not a bad player, but it's certainly not one of the best in the country. And and I think they're just missing that. I mean, they're they're missing a, a dog. They're they're missing a dog who can who can just will them when they're not in Cameron Indoor Stadium. But what have they done? They've beaten Michigan State. That's it. And I kept them ranked because I still believe in them. And and that's getting criticized. Other people won't rank them on this Monday. I I'm keeping them ranked. But man. They don't have a dog, and they can't shoot the ball consistently. Who who's knocking down shots for this team on the perimeter? Well, I, that's that's kind of what Very I was mediocre. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. Is like if you're not going to be really good defensively, you have to be like a top five offense in college basketball, right? That okay. uh, we'll we'll just compare them to North Carolina, right? North Carolina's got some of the same questions defensively that. Duke does, right? They're maybe not exactly the same situation, but neither of them are going to be great on that end of the floor. Um, North Carolina's got a top five offense in the sport. R.J. Davis is averaging 20 a game. We know how good Armando Baycott is. You look at what Harrison Ingram's done when he's come in. Um, Elliot Cadell, maybe not the scoring pop that we thought, but in his last five games, he's had 24 assists and two turnovers, averaging like 20. That's what we thought he was going to be, for what it's worth. I I didn't think he was ever going to score a ton of points. No, but I'm saying, like, he's out there and he's doing something very, very, very well. Yes. Whereas with Duke, like, Caleb Foster was really good against Michigan State, didn't do too much, and then popped up against uh, Georgia Tech with 12, right? So my my big thing is, so let, let me ask you like this with Duke, T.O. Is this mm. stuff fixable, right? If we have questions about how good they are offensively, if we have questions about whether or not that point guard play, guard play is ever going to get to the elite level as opposed to just good. They're good. They're not bad but they're not elite. And we also have questions about what they are defensively. Like, is this just kind of a flawed roster or is this something where you think Shire can kind of put it together and figure it out? The the hard part about this is in order to figure it out defensively, you kind of have to change your identity a little bit, which is kind of the iffy portion about this because you still have guards that can cause problems. It's just, there's nothing behind it. That that's kind of the, scary part if i were a duke fan like you it, that roster is not suited to be like what it what they what their best teams have been right and now I, I there's never been a bigger premium on long athletic shot blockers in college basketball than there's been right now in this year mm-hmm. just because of the change of the rules right like ryan young's just down there now he's just down there he's not taking charges He's just down there. And when you play super athletic teams, not saying Georgia Tech's like this monstrously athletic team, but I would consider Arkansas that. I would consider Arizona that. Like that, that's where the problem arises. It's a really good point. It's so. a really good point. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.